Hi you guys, um, hello and welcome. I hope everyone's doing really well. I'm having a really good day, I'm just at school. Anyone know what kind of bird that is? This is such a beautiful sound. Anyways, I have a really incredible plant I want to show you guys. This is witch hazel. So this is in the family Hamamillionaceae, and it has this really interesting flower. So, and, and I think a really interesting thing about this plant too is uh, it keeps its leaves, so, or yeah, it retains its leaves all the way through the winter and keeps them on until the new growth pushes out, uh, which is significantly later. So sometimes you can have dead leaves on this plant up until April, May even, and it just looks so wonderful uh, contrasted with these blooms. So the witch hazel is, um, some hallmark features are its bloom time. It's also known as the winter flower. Uh, it'll give you these nice raggedy blooms, usually in January. Uh, it's currently January the 26th. I believe, no, January the 27th, sorry. So uh, this is kind of peak blooming season for this plant. Uh, I like slightly acidic soils. It has very many trunks. It's a multi-stemmed tree has this really nice sort of uh, lateral growth pattern to it and it produces these wonderful fans. I don't know if you can see that, they're just so nicely alternately arranged. Incredibly cold hardy plant, you guys. This is a plant that's cold hardy down to negative 40 degrees Celsius. Um, so incredibly cold hardy. Uh, it doesn't really have any, like I don't really know, I, I don't have so much care to, like tips to say about this plant because it's so easy to take care of. So it doesn't mind getting wet, it doesn't mind drought, it doesn't mind um, compact soil, it doesn't really require optimal drainage, it just seems to thrive wherever you put it. So long as the one thing I will say is this plant will get a little bit of dieback and start to wilt on you if it gets too hot. Uh, this is a plant that doesn't like routine temperatures above 30 degrees Celsius. So the mature height of this plant is about two to three times this height, so you're looking at about 30, 35 feet, sometimes even 40 feet. Uh, this is about mature spread, so mature spread is about 15 feet. Uh, it has this really dense crown. You can do a little bit of corrective pruning and get rid of fans that you don't want if you want a fuller appearance. And just look at these blooms. So just anatomically, they're really interesting. They almost remind me of like a Hoya. Um, the Hoya Wayeti, I think, is one of those plants that this kind of reminds me of. So it has these four calyxes, and then these here are the petals. So I don't know if you can see the contrast. This one's, um, this is where kind of all the action happens. This is the main component of the flower. And then these here are just to attract pollinators. So this plant over here is a really important plant if you want to support your local bee populations, uh, because this is a time when a lot of insects tend to be struggling and this is just a really good nectar source for them. It kind of keeps them going and persisting through the early spring. So, um, what else should I say? It has this really nice compound leaf. Um, they go kind of reddish before they go brown. They start curling up at the margins. It's a simple leaf. Uh, it's quite ovate in shape. It has this really nice netted venation to it, alternate netted venation. Um, and I just think it's a super striking plant. This plant lasts forever like you can keep this in a like a vase or like a vase as a centerpiece on the table and it'll last for you even with the flowers intact until late February March so a couple of months uh, so this here is native to Japan it's also native to some parts of uh, the Korean Peninsula it's native to some parts of China uh, specifically the northeast of China and it's just a really interesting plant I wanted to show you guys this here too it produces multiple different colors. Uh, this is the exact same specimen, but I don't know if you can see, it has a different color to the petals, and this one here actually has more than five petals. This has seven petals per flower. And I honestly don't know what causes that. I think it's a little bit of a, uh, a gender difference within the blooms. I think um, they, they can self-pollinate, and you will get a little bit of a nut on these um, plants, but it's it's not like the edible hazelnut. It's more of like a like a subdued, minimal, uh, hard, rock-like nut. Uh, those emerge a little bit later. Those emerge more in March and April where I live. So yeah, incredibly cold hardy plant, just super visually appealing. Um, I don't know. I just think they're such a happy plant. Uh, the blooms are born in clusters of four to eight. And yeah. 
Uh, I, I know they also come in a white color, they also come in a cream color and orange, and they're just a super cold hardy plant. So this here is Witch Hazel. Uh, later on I'll try to make a video for you guys on the Spiral Witch Hazel, so that has a completely different form, but pretty similar plant in, um, in habit. So this is a really easy plant to take care of. Now I just really wanted to show you guys, this here is a heritage, um, this here is Bartlett Pear. I don't know if you guys can see here, but look, there's literally a hole right there, right in the middle of the pear tree, and it's still growing. Isn't that just so cool? So yeah, I don't know. I'm rambling on now, but I'm just having a really good day. Uh, stay blessed, you guys. I'll have more videos coming. Uh, I know a couple of people were asking me to make a video on fragrant plants, and I, I honestly don't have that much access to a lot of fragrant plants where I live right now, just because it's not the right time of the year but I'll definitely make a video on that later when I get my hands on some. Uh, these unfortunately are not very fragrant. Uh, you can prune them and put the prune tips in water and create your own uh, natural rooting hormone. It's really efficient because it's high in auxins, naturally occurring auxins. And you can make your own tea out of it. This here, although not technically an edible plant, it's really, really good in an infusion if you want to use it as a topical cream for your skin. It has good regenerative properties. And yeah, it's just a really beautiful member of the Hazel family. So have a good day, you guys. Stay blessed. Thank you for watching. And yeah, hope you guys are feeling as good as I am today. Yeah, stay blessed.